Hello and what's up peeps, this is the Geek Goddess back again with another video and this time we are going to talk about chromatic aberration or chromatic distortion or color fringing or the glitch effect. Yes, finally. I know I have mentioned this in multiple videos before that I'd be making a separate tutorial later on how to create and add this chromatic aberration effect to your artworks but I completely forgot about it. Thanks to Tim and his recent comment on one of my videos, I finally remembered that I owe you guys this video. So here it is, finally, and this is gonna be a relatively shorter video compared to all my other videos from the last one year or more. Okay, so before I talk about how you can create this effect, let's try to understand a bit about what it really is. If you want to skip this concept part and get right on to the step-by-step -step process at the end, then you can do that from the timestamp below, but I recommend watching the full video till the end to get the full picture. So, what is chromatic aberration or light fringing? When a ray of natural white light, such as the light we receive from the sun, passes through a transparent medium, such as a lens or a prism, the path of the light ray bends. And not only does it bend, but like in case of a prism, it also splits up into more light rays of different wavelengths, roughly representing the seven colors of a rainbow. This is known as the dispersion of light. And I'm pretty sure almost everybody is somewhat familiar with this because of Pink Floyd and their signature design. So how is this exactly related to chromatic aberration? What you need to understand first is that chromatic aberration is not something we see through our naked eyes. It's something that's visibly captured only by camera lenses. So it is exclusive to photographs or videos taken with cameras and cameras have lenses and chromatic aberration happens when the camera lens fails to concentrate or focus all the light rays at one particular point. Let's try to understand this with the example of an illustrated comparison. So we have case A where the light rays passing through a camera lens all meet at one particular point after the refraction, thus capturing a very crisp image like this. Then we have case B, where the light rays passing through a camera lens first split up or disperse into the visible spectrum of light, much like a rainbow. Because if you look closely, the two corners of a lens can be roughly simplified into a prism. And you know what prisms do. So after the dispersion, when it's finally time for the light rays to focus at one particular point, they fail. And as you can see that they all meet at different points. And this is what the captured image looks like. The edges are not crisp. They are fringed into bright colors giving the image a bit of a hazy or blurry and glitchy look. And this my friends is chromatic aberration. This has always been considered as an unwanted distortion due to the failure or defect of lenses and that's why photographers and editors have come up with ways to digitally remove this chromatic aberration from photos to give them a clean and crisp look. But ironically, some digital artists have turned this into a trend. So now instead of removing these effects from photos, we have actually come up with ways to add this to our art mainly to give our paintings a bit of a photorealistic look or simply a cool stylized feel. Brilliant, right? So enough with the concepts, let's try to see how we can actually create this effect in Photoshop. But any decent digital art software can do this. So there are a bunch of ways to do it, all involving channel separation. But I'll show my way how I do it. And I feel this is the most simplest, fastest and easiest way of doing it. So first we have this piece, it's a character I illustrated a couple of years back, clean and crisp edges, no color fringing, and we'll add the chromatic aberration now. So for that first I'll duplicate the layer, and now I'll double click on the thumbnail of this duplicated layer from the layer panel, and it'll bring up the layer styles panel. Alternatively, I can also click on the FX icon from down here and choose blending options, and again it'll bring up the layer styles panel. Now I'll go to the advanced blending section and beside the channels, I'll unclick or deselect the G or green channel. Then I'll click on OK. That's it, we are done. Oh wait, you don't see any changes yet. Right, so let me select the move tool, 
click and move the duplicated layers and here it is easy peasy now the trick here is to not overdo it so i'll just zoom in and use the arrow keys on my keyboard to gently move the layer slightly to the side diagonally not too much or the image will get a bit hazy just enough to sort of mimic the photographic color fringing near the sharp edges you can also vary the amount of distortion in specific areas of the image so if you want to overdo it a bit in the background to make it more hazy or blurry then i'll duplicate the layer once more and repeat the same process but this time i'll switch off the red or r channel only now i'll move it quite a bit to get a significant distortion or aberration but it's affecting the character also to fix that i'll select the eraser tool select a soft round brush and erase this new layer only near the character area alternatively you can also do this with mask that's the non-destructive way now you can see the glitch effect is mostly on the background and very little and subtle on the character thus adding more depth to the scene and helping the character stand out more from the background so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video and got to learn something new and if you did please hit the like button share comment subscribe and click on the bell icon to stay updated with all my upcoming videos so that's all for now see you on the next one peace Thank you.